Hello, my dear folks, and welcome to, yes, your favorite show, Two of Paste World. Ha! Ah, I am Alex, as usual, haven't changed from last week, and I have right here... Guillaume, because I changed. Did you? Well, yes, hygiene is important. <laughs> oh, right. I don't do that. I like to be filthy dirty. Yeah, but that's okay, you're all, you're perfect anyway. <laughs> He's just a saint, ain't he? I'm not. So, hello! We're going to be talking about stuff today. Yes, we are. Our three topics for today. Yes, yes, we're gonna go for three since, you know, we don't want to go over the top as usual. We're gonna try to stay limited this time a little. <laughs> Our three topics, we're going to be starting off with Star Wars Battlefront, a little nice announcement that's going to be done for the Star Wars event. Yes. That's upcoming on what date? I don't remember, but soon. It's in April. April, exactly. So we're going to start off with that. Afterwards, we're going to be talking about online support for MLB 14 that has been cut off with the upcoming release of MLB 15. So is that cool? Is it not? We're going to talk about that. Yeah. Windows 10 will be free this summer for pretty much everyone that has a license for Windows 7, Windows 8, and even if your copy is pirated, you're, you're gonna get the upgrade. Why would Microsoft do this? And more. And we're gonna finish with the squeeze. As Yee. always. And our first subject, Star Wars Battlefront. One of the games I've been waiting for for a long time, hoping there would be a continuity to the first ones that were out. Well, the first and the second one on the first Xbox, not the Xbox One. Yeah, but naming it Star Wars Battlefront and just Battlefront, isn't that kind of a way to reboot the series again? Yeah, well, that's pretty much it. Well, it's not a continuity, but yes, a reboot. And Thank you, Dice. Done by Dice, yes. <laughs> Those who brought us Battlefield and are still bringing them out. I don't know what to expect from them. I don't know if they're going to break the series if it's gonna be revolutionary is it you know the battlefield mechanics work pretty well yeah but will they work with <laughs> Star Wars thing. pushing that into space are we gonna have the space battles again are we gonna be going into ships and destroying key elements and then going out and being all like yay I feel happy about my experience or are we going more to the basics with the field battles and uh, destructible vehicles? environments more concentrated on that which would be more what dice always did and apparently will always do <laughs> pour well, them well okay they now have the um, green light for uh mirror's edge too yeah and mirror's edge was pretty different from anything they've ever worked on and yes. it was cool too oh and it was amazing it was one of my favorite games from recent years easily in my, my top 10 for something that was refreshing new and just the fact that the environment you were playing in was this revolution feeling that you wanted to push back uh, <laughs> the capitalism it was cool I liked it. It was, I liked the sanitized look yeah, of everything. Yeah, especially. Was, just this clean look it was really nice. The, the, and the, the subtility still of, you know, you have to go there, you had the wall. Subtility, not that subtle. With no, the it red wasn't subtle at all. All the red spots are like, okay, I gotta go there. But at least you could take them off if you wanted a really genuine experience. Yeah, but it made for a really cool visual look. It made for an aesthetic that was unique yeah. at the time. Because, well, a lot of game hyped that. Yeah, I brought it. Hate? Back and hyped. 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 <laughs> So yeah, if they could push another new refreshing experience like we had with Mirror's Edge. Well, okay, new, fresh, well, it's not totally a new game. It's Star Wars Battlefront. Yeah. Star Wars Battlefield. Battlefield, the Star Wars series. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. Da -dum, da -dum, da -dum. And you have a Stormtrooper in black and orange on the box. <laughs> But that's pretty much it. And they're gonna debut the game, as in it won't be just our drawings and everything, at the Star Wars celebration in April. Which means, are we closer to the launch date? Do you think 2015 might be the one? Uh, well, I think they already talked about the launch date and it was for fall of 2015. They talked about it, but nothing has been announced. Yeah. And with the new movie coming out, December 6th, which is going to be awesome or really <laughs> bad. It cannot be just, eh, it's okay. We were talking about this last night about the Star Wars universe and whatever was going on with it. Gil had a massive nerdgasm about uh, that. As always. But what I wanted to talk about uh, was the Star Wars games related to the Star Wars universe made by Disney? No, 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 no. no. Uh, it's not Probably been not. announced. Okay. But 
they still have the license with Disney, so oh, they do. It couldn't. It could be not canon and still be a game. Yeah, which mm. I don't. Come on, <laughs> Disney, make it happen. Make it happen. You scrapped an entire universe. Yeah. Give us the game. <laughs> exactly. So yeah, I am very, very eager to try that out. Well, definitely, and see what's going to be announced next month on Star Wars. Yes, I am. Battle too. Front. Ba Battle, ba Battle of Front. Battle of Front. Excuse so. me, French. Star Wars Battlefield, coming. <laughs> Maybe this year. Yes, that was intended. And now on to other things. The online support for MLB 14, the show, will be cut off this June, less than a year after it got out. Incredible! How can you do that? Is it even legal, in a way? Legal? Well, it depends. I mean, do you actually own the game yeah. when you buy it physically? No, not anymore. You because do not own the intellectual of property services. of the game. No. So, yeah, it's okay. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> but you expect a game you buy to work. And if the online component is dead less than a year after it, don't you devalue your game in a way? Oh, definitely. And uh, for your fans, wow, that's a big disservice. Yes, it is. <laughs> and that's a really good pun. Disservice? Because mm -hmm. you don't have service anymore? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to hide now. Yeah, you should do that. So yeah, no. It's a big no, no, morally. Yes. But they could definitely legally do it. Is it okay? No. No. No, 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 no. Is it? I actually have a counterpoint to that. Okay, go for it. The main experience of the game is the single player, right? I think that's a question of perspective. It is? But go on. <laughs> if the main experience isn't touched at all, what does that mean? Is it okay? Okay, so you're saying you still have the essence of your game that is available that you could play? Yeah. Without the online component. Exactly. Is Which, yes, okay. If good. the online component was required at all, like an MMORPG or something like that, you would expect more outrage from that. But for a game that is expected to last a year, because it's a, it's a sport game, it's not like yes. a, an RPG or But you're just shooter. considering that all your fans have gargantuous amounts of money to always be buying the games that are coming out. I don't know, 60 a year, is it too much to ask for Very a Very expensive. I'd rather buy a pizza pie than that. Pizza pie? Imagine all the pizza pies you could buy with that money. Yes. Would I actually feed you, but not that game. Yes. But... I am going off board with this. Yeah? I am going off board with this. Yes, you are. Uh -huh. But that's okay. The problem I see with that is, well, you're essentially cutting a part of your game to force people to go to the new version. Hi, Apple. <laughs> <laughs> yes. But people are expecting that nowadays. So can they get away with it? Oh, they're going to get away with it. There's going to be some people complaining, but after six months, as everything... As in politics, people will forget and go on with their lives. You think? That's how it works, yes. That sucks. Uh, <laughs> I don't like it at all. People lack conviction. Do they? Mm-hmm. You know, <laughs> I'm thinking that if they had a way to complain that would actually uh, get heard, they yes. would. Well, definitely. So the problem isn't that people lack conviction, it's that people lack a way to a fight way back. A way of communicating. A way They're... to communicate di directly to the developer. Yeah, I guess so. The internet is there for that, but a minority of people use forums. So you'd and... say Sony had have to have a medium by which people can communicate to them their sorrows. Yeah. Better than but... that, do you remember uh, on the first Wii, there was a Wii channel, something like that, that Nintendo asked questions each week containing, like, it was random questions about... Uh, meteorology and what? games and whatever it was really <laughs> weird okay but today the... did you like your second apple for breakfast no but it was like uh um do you like snow what the hell yeah and there was a bunch of questions like that and you could see the stats breakdown of all the questions asked in the week and in the week prior so you would see like 56 persons of respondent said no snow's bad I hate it. Yeah, but that's the kind of thing I want to see in my Telltale game games, which is really more interesting. Don't they already do that? Yeah, exactly. Oh, well, that's cool. <laughs> but I'd like to see Sony put this pants on and do something like that. Yeah. For for moves like that. Sony uh, Valve will with you... the recent F. <laughs> huh? Valve with the recent F. Yes. That could be a hint. 
yes exactly mm -hmm. that'd be an easy way to communicate with players hey we're gonna do that what do you think about it yes or no yeah and you go like a resounding no that's not a good idea an online component i use because you know let's face it we're less than a year after release oh yeah and you're saying debt to it right now that's ridiculous but is it really cost effective to do so well yes okay i, I i'd imagine they're saving money doing it since you'd probably have to well you close down servers and stuff like that or they're just using those servers for mlb 15 maybe but still it's quite a shame though it just is. leave behind some people that could sometimes actually play one sports game for easily three years. And then we get to the question, uh, when is it okay to close servers down? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Because there, there will always be players playing the game. I mean, remember Halo 2? When it closed? <laughs> I played it was, for days. Pun intended, legendary. Yes. <laughs> it was. And it was, what, 10 years after the launch? Something like that? Halo 2 came out in... No, I'm ashamed of myself right now. Yes, you <laughs> should be. 2004? I think so. I don't... Yeah. So yeah, they yeah. closed servers, what, six, seven years after the fact? No, uh, servers went down, I think, in 2012, 2013, something like that. Oh, yeah. 2013, I think. Yeah. Oh. But anyway, the story about that was there was, I think, a group of 20, pers uh, 20 people that yep. were still playing the game on the Xbox servers just to be able to keep it on. Because they said they wouldn't close the servers as, as long, long as people were playing. People played. Yeah. But as soon as nobody played... And they in the end, there was still one guy <laughs> playing alone and they kept the servers on. But I think after a moment, they just turned them off and it, that was the end of an era. That, that was it. But the question is, when is it okay? Is it ever okay? Would we build? Well, yes. Would we be supposed to put like legacy server support for games? <sighs> because in a way, you're destroying part of your product. True that, but from the point of view of a company wanting to make money, yeah. When you got only twenty people playing on your servers worldwide, no. But Sorry. then again, if I think you could cut it off and hey, live with the fact that maybe they won't be happy, but everyone else won't give a shit but in a way a server for 20 people that's not that hard to probably not but still to take a, to, to stay <laughs> up you know yeah and maybe i don't know maybe 20 years down the road people will be uh buying old xbox uh, first xboxes i was about to say xbox ones like again back on yeah right and, and what what no come on they just brought up the master chief collection come on and we don't Come care on. all that much. I mean, I what? still want Not to like dig out my... Completely broken. I still want to dig out my SNES and play like Chrono Trigger, which I do every year and will be doing uh, soon. So I'll be twitching that. Watch that. Okay. But yeah, that's a plug. <laughs> but seriously, retro gaming is really cool and it's mm -hmm. really popular. But what happens when you go like, oh man... Nostalgia struck me. I want to play Halo 2. You dig out your old Xbox, you plug it in, and then you start playing it. And, well, Whenever the online component's on, not use a, I think it's called Xbox Connect that you can use online. Seriously? Yeah. What is that? Um, I don't know how it works exactly, but it will just connect Xbox Connect users between them, and you'll be playing online. Yeah, we used that when I was in high school. My friend Evil used that, actually. Is, and we didn't need Xbox Live. We didn't have to pay for it. We used it, Xbox Connect. Is that from Microsoft? No. no. Is it legal? <laughs> I don't think so. Well, if it's not legal, it's not. it cannot be a solution. <laughs> I know, I know, I know. But, I mean, it's just because if you want to really, really do it, you can do that. But I have not legally advised you to do so. <laughs> Talking about pirates, coming up in a second... Windows 10 will be free to upgrade for uh, licenses that for Windows 7 and 8, but much more weirdly than that, pirates will be able to upgrade to a legitimate Windows 10 license. Yar har fiddly dee. Hey, 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 ho, 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 ho. Windows 10, yeah, as we said, free, free, free for everybody. Who owned Windows 7, Windows 8, or pirated the Windows copy? Yeah, they, they're going to upgrade to one of the best version of Windows yet. I've tried the technical preview and it's really cool. It upgrades Windows 8, which was abysmal in mm -hmm. a lot of ways. <laughs> yes. 
from a technical point of view, from an um, aesthetic point of view. From every point Everything, of view. Everything, the functionality. Yeah, man. Gaming site disastrous. is really cool. DirectX 12 will be awesome, I'm sure. And the thing is, pirated copies of Windows 7 and 8 will be able to upgrade legitimately. Why would they do that? Well, one thing for sure, you want to push your OS as much as you can, oh. especially when you're competing against Apple. Are they? I mean, Mac OS X is a fringe OS right now. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it is. Hmm. That's Apple is really, really big because of because of the iPhone. Yeah, and I think immense. from a, from the artistic point of view, well, on the artistic world for yep. artists in general, Mac they're Mac users. Yeah, but I mean, Windows is like ninety percent of Over computer everywhere, really? or something like that. I'll I'll incredible. check the fact. Well, okay, around the world. Around the world, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, well, I, I, I want to see if those uh, statistics in North America. Okay. Well, after the episode, I'll get you those and post it on Facebook. But Windows is pretty much dominant still mm -hmm. on main computers. That is because Linux is holding a lot of market share in cell phones and oh, yeah, other right. devices, and Apple is just breaking it with iOS. So. Comparing that to uh, OS X, that's was also given for free. <laughs> Mainly. Mainly, yeah. Some versions. For some versions, okay. So from that perspective, Microsoft... Is catching up? Is catching up, yeah. I think it's about the Windows Store, though. Yeah. More users have the Windows 10 version. They can push for bigger, better store that developers will flock to. Mm -hmm. And people will buy from the Windows Store, meaning that they're going to have the walled garden iOS effect. You don't want to leave because you have already too much invested too much, uh, applications and everything that's yeah. attached to it into the ecosystem and, so they're yeah. they're kind of solidifying yeah. their user base mm -hmm. into windows which is a very intelligent way of doing things yes it is <laughs> that would be the best I way mean, to go about it as long as the os is good and it is go for it uh -huh. so why not upgrade this summer i am are you i'm buying a mac <laughs> like mine well, probably not. Are you are you gonna go for the Mac with the one port? No, <laughs> no, no. I'll buy a tower, a Mac. You're gonna, oh yeah, yeah. Go for that. That's because cool. I want to do the editing, the video editing, and everything. So you want a and, powerhouse? Yeah, and I'm more. I feel like my workflow is better on Mac mm -hmm. than Windows. I don't know why, but Smoother that is experience, I guess. As I can see, you like. The help, well, the application placements and the options you had for sound and everything. Exactly. Yeah. It, it just seems easier to do my audio video work on Mac. I'm probably just biased, but <laughs> but I like gaming better on, you know, a gaming machine. Sorry, Apple. So uh, that pretty much concludes our Windows part of this podcast. And, and we will see you on The, the Squeeze. Squeeze. Welcome to... The squeeze. <laughs> Here we are with our first story. Talking about StarCraft story to be concluded with Legacy of the Void. No more StarCraft forever. It's the end. <laughs> yeah, right. Too much money to be made with StarCraft. Because Big universe. Because Blizzard knows when to stop milking the cow. <laughs> yeah, right. <sighs> to continue, we also have... I am a happy, happy man. Sony has taken again the trademark for The Last Guardian. Oh yeah, Hope is still alive. Someday down the road with the PlayStation 7, we'll get our game. 7? I'd Seven. probably go for 8. Yeah, maybe. Nah. And uh, we continue with Xenoblade Chronicles download will require at least 8 gigs on the micro SD, leaving the new 3DS owners with uh, 4 gig. Yeah. You only got a 4 gig with their new 3DS XL, so what you going to do about that? So the only game that's exclusive to the new platform cannot be downloaded digitally before an upgrade. Thank you, Nintendo. Yeah. God of War 3 Remastered is coming this July. Yes. For 50 bucks. But, but... But that game already came out and it's now 20 bucks brand new on PS3. Yes, but it's now on PlayStation 4 with a brand new fresh coat of 1080p light. Yeah. Woo! yeah, I don't know why they do that. And we've heard so much rumors this week about... What was it again? Mm, it was, it was, it was. There was a poll on that. <laughs> 
It was about man, I, I really have that goddamn game right here. It's right here. It is. It's there. It's there. It was a remastered version for um there the was Adventures of Alex and his bad memory. Anyway, there's a lot of talks <laughs> about remakes like yeah. Gears of War, etc. Which Blast Us denied, by the way. There won't be a Gears of War trilogy remake thing. But we said it last week. This is ridiculous. And this is getting out of hand. God of War 3 for 50. That's not okay. No, no, no. At all. We have um Episodic Conquer game coming. Yep. Essentially, it's going to be a... Uh, contents pack and episodic game coming to Project Sparks. It, from... it, there's still some potential for it to be cool, but we probably expect something more from Rare. It's not even full from Rare. I know. It's from the Project it's Sparks the guy. Yeah. This is ridiculous. Oh, wait. Is it the Project Spark user or the person who created... Well, the person, the studio who started... The studio who Project created Spark. Project Sparks. Will do an assets pack containing everything in the game for people to create around and an episodic game. Okay. Yep. Eh. Kojima Productions and Kojima are leaving Konami after Metal Gear Solid 5. The Konami stripped the name Hideo Kojima from every poster of the game on their site already. Ooh. So it's not a Hideo Kojima game anymore. It's just Metal Gear. And in some really weird twist, they've announced working on a new Metal Gear game again. Already. Yay. Five's not even done yet. I feel like milking is coming. Yep. I feel like Kojima was... He was the wall. The floodgates. And it's now over. But I am eager to see what Kojima will do now that he's oh, completely totally. free. Now we're going into something interesting. That could be the start of a new yep. really cool era. We're probably going to be forgetting about Konami. And yeah, now Kojima is going to be in our heads forever and ever. Yeah, maybe. We'll see. <laughs> we have an Xbox One April preview that is now live on the live. <laughs> so, pretty much about achievements, party stability. Yep. Which we've been waiting for because goddamn stability for the parties is just horrible. I just love part popping out out of a party and going back in and well, sometimes it just won't work. <laughs> Me and Alex have had problems four days in a row talking to each other on Xbox Live. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Microsoft. <laughs> and now for the last thing, like always, new releases this week. Blood fucking born. This is going to be cool. Followed by Borderlands Handsome Collection on the same day. The, we could say, overpriced collection, too. But we won't. I guess we're still going to have fun with it. But we're gentlemen. Yeah. <laughs> And our last but really cool Life is Strange episode yes. to talk to you about yes. it last week. Yes. yes, Alex played it this week. I think he's I happy. I freaking loved it. Ugh. It is insane and I cannot wait to see where to go with that. Because it's telltale but better. Oh, fly me to the moon. It is. <sighs> so good. So good. Uh, so yes, this Tuesday, I'm going to be playing Life is Strange, contrary to people who are playing Bloodburn and Borderlands. Life is Strange. And That's Alex will be twitching the entire episode. I'll be on the chat and... Uh... That's it. That's yeah. pretty much it. Uh, we'll be twitching this week. I'll be trying to put a Let's Play for uh, Darkest Dungeon online on YouTube. We're going to be more present and more fo focused. Fo fo focused? Focused? More focused. <laughs> that was a community joke. <laughs> Go watch Community Season yeah, 6 now. Do that. It's good. So I think that concludes our third episode of Toothpaste World. Hope you liked it. Comment, as usual, as to what you did not appreciate or what you did appreciate about this episode. Subscribe and like. Yeah. Share and talk about it with, uh, you know, your loved ones. Think about us in your dreams, and uh, if you dream something that is very cool for us to talk about it, uh, thank you. That was so weird. Okay, <laughs> thank you guys. Uh, have a great week, and see you soon. Love you. Bye.